Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. In 2011, the watchdog organization ChildrenOnline.org conducted research with a survey collected from over 2,500 students from 4th through 12th grade. The results reporting a frightening discovery. Nearly 83% of all students reported having internet access from their bedrooms, but only 16% reported having some type of web filtering software or parental control software on their computer. This means that most children have internet access from behind the closed doors of their bedroom without any parental supervision or oversight. With me on the show today to offer parents some safety advice on what they can do to keep their kids safe on the internet is speaker and trainer Abby Stokes. Abby has uh, taught courses in basic computing at both Cooper Union and NYU School of Lifelong Learning and has traveled the country to more than 20 states to help digital immigrant, immigrants conquer their fear of technology. Ms. Stokes is the author of the book, Is This Thing On?, a computer handbook for late bloomers, technophobes, and the kicking and screaming. Welcome to the show, Abby. Thank you so much. Safety on the internet <clears throat> is so important, not only for children, but uh, our elderly as well. for everybody, right? really. We all have to be careful. And I think what's so interesting is we all know that the front door to your home is kids aren't allowed to let strangers into their house. I think if we all think of the computer as our home, which is what it is now, we have to think of it in just the same terms. Whatever you do on the computer is the door opening to your house. Right, and, and I noticed in the book here, in your book, you talked about that, the, uh, the, the, the front door, because you wouldn't put stuff on the right. front of your house that you wouldn't put on the front uh, screen of your, of your website. Right, so if you're thinking about social networking, and that's a whole conversation to have about what age is appropriate for kids to let themselves be on, to, for you to let them be on Facebook or on Twitter or on LinkedIn, which would seem strange for a child, but you never know. When they get there, the same rule that applies to you and me applies to them. They need to be able to realize whatever they put on the website, they're basically taping to the outside of the door to their home. So they don't want to put down something mean about their teacher because possibly their teacher sees it the same way your boss might see it. So that's really, as far as social networking is concerned, that's the one hard, fast rule for all of us. If you wouldn't put it on the outside of the door to your home, you shouldn't put it on the internet. I, I guess I'm really frustrated with the fact that uh, uh, parents don't understand how dangerous it is out there. I know. And I, what I find is a lot of parents uh, either suffer from the halo effect. They say, oh, Susie wouldn't do anything mm. like that. Stop it. Um, or they are there, the belief that, come on, we got to give them street smarts. They're going to have to learn how to do it somewhere, so we might as well just let them do it. And then you've got the completely, um, the, the, like grandparents who right. are, don't even have an email address letting their kids right. on the internet. Well, it's interesting. I, when teaching classes, I'll see it happen to students. I will be having a group of students all getting online, and I'll see one person's face turn red, and I realize they typed in the website incorrectly. You know Peeps, those little marshmallow things for Easter? Yeah. There's Peep Show and there's Peeps Show. Peeps Show is the website for the Peeps. Peep Show is a dirty website. Oh. And I had one of my students, his face got red, and I thought, what does he have? And I looked and I saw exactly what he saw. <laughs> It's why, to build on your point about having the computer or any technology in a communal space, kids don't intentionally, usually, don't intentionally go to those sites, but one letter off and they're there. Now, if they're there and you happen to be making cookies or walking by or doing your own work, they probably will either get off the site or they'll acknowledge they found it by accident. You know, they'll hoop with laughter, whatever it is. And then you can have a conversation about how easily that happens and don't worry about it, just move away from the site. If they're in their room, why wouldn't they look? That's a curious, healthy mind. So we don't want to put them in a position where they begin to go deeper and deeper into what was actually an accidental find. And I find that you're right. They stumble on it. They're not even sure uh, what they're looking at, but right. it's like they know it's, they know it's wrong. They know it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if, you're right. If they're in their bedroom, they might go, hmm, yeah. curiosity is very right. normal. So they're not bad kids. And a a lot of those sites actually cater to once you've opened up a site like that, suddenly there's all this malware and spyware on your computer because things keep popping up on the screen after that and you don't know why it happened. It's why actually I say 
feel very free to go into the history of the computer for your kid and let them know you're doing it. So you can actually go into the computer, whether you put monitoring software on or not, you can go in and look at the history of what sites they've been on. It's important for you to know where they've been for their safety, but for the safety of the computer, you want to know where right. they've been because certain sites make you suddenly say, it's time for me to now run a diagnostic on the computer and make sure I don't have spyware or malware. Mm -hmm. So it's a good excuse. I think you should be as transparent as possible with them parent, transparent. You're a parent with them and so you want to be sure they understand it's their safety that's making you want to look into the history. It's not necessarily that they did it consciously, but let them know that and it might make them a little bit more conscious about where they're going if they're doing it intentionally. That's such a good point uh, that we let them know that we're doing this to keep them safe. We're not doing it because we don't trust them because no. absolutely we trust them. The only other issue that I know is, is their friends would say, hey, go check this out. And because peer pressure, it becomes more powerful than the parent pressure, right. then they're likely to go check it out. Right. And so you're going to be able to say, you checked it out and don't check that out again. Right, right. Yeah. It's, a, it's such a sticky wicket because I don't think kids intentionally are trying to be bad. But it's curiosity is a very powerful tool. And here, as you said, it's not just that they're going into town. The whole world is in front of them. I mean, we have to really understand the power of the internet. 350 million websites. How many of those are inappropriate or not safe for your kids? Tens of millions of them. Mm -hmm. You have to be, honestly, I, I don't want to freak people out, but you should be scared. You should be scared for yourself and scared for your kid enough that when you tell them, when you answer the door, somebody knocks on the door and we're not home, you don't let them in. That's the same rule with the internet, right? Why would they go to those websites? Because it's too dangerous. So what else, we only have a couple minutes left, but what else would you um, offer to parents for guidelines? Well, I think say? it's an interesting thing because uh, it's about controlling the situation, but controlling the situation with dialogue. I think the most important thing you do with your kid is you can't say, don't have strangers on Facebook. Explain to them how creepy it is. Why would you want somebody you don't know to have information about you? Well, you wouldn't want them on the street, so why would you want on the internet? I think it's about the dialogue between the parents with technology. I think if you're going to set up a contract, which I think is a great idea with technology use in the house, I think if you sit down and you both write the contract together, and part of that is your modeling behavior. If you're going to have everybody hand in their digital devices in the evening once they've done their homework or whatever they need it for, everybody hands in their device. If they're not allowed to use it when you're on vacation or at dinner, you're not allowed to use it. And you're in the contract too. If you break the contract, there are ramifications for you just the same way there are ramifications for them. Then it's actually an interactive dialogue about technology. Nobody's leading this and pushing anybody around. We're all understanding the risks of technology and that we don't want it to become a huge part of our family. That's not the family. It's a tool. And, and that's a sad thing. I, I was um, um, traveling this past week and so many times I was at a restaurant and there's a family, all four of them or five of them on electronic devices. And it's, we've lost the art of talking With to adults, each other. I've put their cell phone into a glass of water. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not a person who actually lets anybody use a cell phone at dinner. I just think it's not appropriate. It's just not a way to build conversation. And once the cat's out of the bag, it's hard to pull it back in again. So this is an easier conversation with people with younger kids. But you can develop, I don't want to be on the phone as much because I want to know what you're thinking. That's coming from the adult. That's not telling the kid what they can't do. That's saying how I want to improve myself. And then they can model that. And the, the, the best thing I like is about the collaboration that you're talking about. You're collaborating with a child to develop an agreement with them. Yeah. Um, so they feel like they're part of the social unit. They're not just being told what to do. Yeah, so. and you can work together to create the document online and learn how to format a document. Right. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Um, it's my pleasure. Uh, good luck with your book. And I, uh, I think that a lot of parents will learn a great deal from our time here on this. Great. Set. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, you've now got a plan for keeping your kids safe on the computer that should give you some peace of mind. Now, another area of home life that offers peace of mind is when you're able to help our children become more organized, a skill they just don't arrive in the world with on their own. My next guest says he's got some simple plans to implement that you can create for solutions and allowing parents and managing stuff around the house that just drives us crazy. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about right after the short break, so don't go away.